This is our robot for RA3D. I'm Leo. I'm Levi. And we're going to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank Anderson Labs for letting us use their 3D printers. This wouldn't have been capable without them. Um, I think Leo's going to go into explaining the grabber and how it benefits us. Yeah. So, the, so there's a couple things about this grabber. Main pieces are these big, this is one plate that we've water jetted out. There's two of them. They're just mirror images of each other, basically. Um, these gear this kind of gear feature is to keep them from, just to keep them kind of aligned. So that way they can't get like off to one side or the other. So they always grab in the middle of this kind of area that we can bring a game piece into the frame of our robot. And then we have some surgical tubing here to grip that. And this has been, it's kind of designed to just grab both. To, so we can do the same thing and rely on this mechanism to grab either a cone or a or a ball. And the way we a particular thing about cones is we're just pick, we're only focusing on picking up cones that are being tipped over. One because it's probably what's going to happen on the field. Chaos ensues, obviously, and it's a lot harder to stand a cone up than it is to tip it over. And the way we tip cones over if they are stood up is we have this plate right here. So this isn't all the way down to the ground right now, but I can just hold it up. And this plate will clip the top of the cone and just tip it over. And then we can grab it. It looks, the cone has a lot similar profile to the ball. They're about the same size. So that allows us to make this a lot easier. So we can grab both of them in about the same way. Yeah, um, another really important feature of it is this hinge. Um, so when we grab a cone and we go onto the pipe, if, since it's going to be horizontal, um, it'll hit the cone and it'll kind of push it up onto this. Um, and that's how it does that with when it lifts up like this. It allows it to just kind of knock it on e more easily. Um, and then we come, um, from there we then come into the linear rails that we designed. Um, we had to build these from scratch, so a very big part of designing these was figuring out how we're going to make them um, possible, how we're going to make them with as few parts as possible, um, as well as just how we're going to route cabling, because there's a lot to uh, unpack with a three-stage um, linear rail system. So each one of these um, has a small little cart that we designed, and we had to hand machine all of. Um, there is some cams in here that help us adjust the tightness of these so we can more easily uh, work with it once we have all the pieces done. Um, <clears throat> then from here, we have our cabling coming down from these three printed pulleys that go all the way through it, um, which then comes into our winch uh, in the center, which when one is pulled, the other one is slackened in the same um, amount so that it pulls up evenly, and then we spin in the opposite direction, it pulls it down or it pushes it up depending on which way we start from. Um, at the beginning of the match, um, as you can tell, this is currently sitting outside of the frame of the robot. Um, we'll start it in an up position, which currently these are stiff. Um, but it pushes up and it starts like this, and then it'll come down during the match, and we should be running like this for most of the match. Um, when we're in certain zones, we'll have to pick it up because we can't extend it past a certain frame. Um, but this whole entire thing um, also allows us to, when we want to go for the higher post up here, we're able to take it and drop the cone on it just as easily from right here and right here. Um, one thing that I would probably work on a little bit more was possibly deepening the grooves of these pulleys just because they kind of slip a little bit more easily um, as well as making it, um, we need to increase the strength of our winch. As of right now, it's a little slow and a little unpredictable. Um, the reason why we went for this design is due to the fact of we have two systems. We have um, a single uh, air cylinder and we have a single winch. So if we have these two sim systems, it makes us very light and it can make us a lot more fast because we have, it's very simple. So simplicity just can make it easier to move quickly. 
Um, we decided to go with rails instead of a bar because we thought that um, using rails would allow us to extend out farther and um, we'd be more balanced with it, as well as we could then position um, game pieces within our robot while we're moving around the field so then um, other, t other people can't knock our game piece out and then we'd lose control of it and we'd have to go pick it up again. Um, also, going through our robot, we have very little space in the bottom, so having this hinge also helps with that. So we can just kind of glide over all of the technical components. We actually have a shield that yeah, yeah. we've been using to protect all of the wires and pneumatic tubing and everything here. It goes, it gets, well, right now we're just taping it to this and to this. So it just kind of allows this to glide over the top as this moves up and out of the frame. One big problem that we've been having with this design though, and we'd advise that you kind of stay away with it, is having such a complicated um, system of pulleys it's a lot of moving parts, and there's a lot of room for errors. We've spent a lot of time fine-tuning this and debugging it, essentially, just, to, just with little things like, like cables slipping off of pulley wheels, or things getting too tight or too loose, making sure that things stay tight, tight enough and not too tight. And it's, it's a lot of moving parts, and there's probably a lot better ways to do that. Yeah, I would definitely say um, don't go for designing your own linear rail system if you can avoid it. It's easier to just get an out of the box one because it's way less machining and 3D printing and it's just, it, you're going to have an easier time with it in general. Um, but I do think that this was a really good learning experience for us to better understand how linear rails work and how to properly route cabling for them. Um, Absolutely. But all in all, I think that this is a very viable solution. Um, I just think that we have a hard time like properly tuning it within the really constricted time frame that we have had so far. Yeah. This could work, but it needs a lot more time because it's a lot to get working, <laughs> essentially. Yeah. Um, I think that wraps up the um, explanation of why and what we did with our robot. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. If you have any questions, uh, comment down below as well as... We can, you can reach out to our Chief Delphi. We, there's a link in the uh, description as well.